Here, in the central tower of Washington National Cathedral in Washington, D.C., there are ten giant swinging bells. There are no computers or motors. These bells are rung by hand by skilled practitioners of the art of change ringing. I lived in Washington about 15 years ago, and I was hooked the moment they let me give it a try. I recently returned to visit while I accompanied a group of English bell ringers on a tour of American bell towers. We began in Boston. Not just any bell tower will do. We must have bells that are hung to swing in a complete circle with just the right fittings and ropes. Here at the Church of the Advent in Boston, there are eight bells cast in 1900. There are thousands of change ringing towers in England where this art form originated in the 17th century. But in North America, we have only about 50 suitable towers. We don't ring traditional music. We ring intricate patterns that we call methods. Some of these methods are still performed almost exactly as they were 350 years ago. Oh, hi. We are a bunch of visitors. In the ringing chamber, each rope is connected to one bell, and each ringer is responsible for one rope. The bells always start and end in a descending scale called rounds. When the rounds have settled down, the conductor will yell go and the name of the method being rung. This method called Stedman is one of the oldest. It was created in 1677. The Old North Church in Boston is home to the oldest change-ringing bells in North America. They were cast in 1744. But this church is most famous for playing a role in the genesis of the American Revolution. It was from this tower that the church sexton held two lanterns as a signal from Paul Revere that the British were approaching by sea on April 18, 1775. In fact, Paul Revere himself was one of the bell ringers at the Old North Church when he was a teenager. The bells he rang are still the bells rung by change ringers in the tower today. When we get to the ringing chamber, take notice of the ropes. Each rope has a colorful woolen tuft called a sally woven into it. The sally protects our hands from rope burns and makes it easier to control the bell. The highest, lightest bell is called the treble. It's being rung by the lady in the white shirt. The traditional way to start ringing is for the treble ringer to announce, look to, treble's going, she's gone. You already know that Stedman is the name of a method. Triples means to ring on seven bells, but you can probably count eight bells ringing. The bell in eighth place is the lowest, deepest, and largest bell. It's called the tenor, and it's being rung by the man in the solid maroon shirt. In a triples or seven bell method, the tenor does not ring in the method. It rings in eighth place the entire time to help establish a rhythm and anchor the music. Bob is not a person. It's a special command by the conductor that tells us to vary the method just a tiny bit to shuffle the bells into a new order and create different music. Wow. 
Next, we drove out to Cape Cod to ring at the Church of the Transfiguration in Orleans, Massachusetts. It's located on a monastic commune called the Community of Jesus. I didn't get a video of the ringing here because I was busy ringing. Just for fun, we rang a quarter peal, which is a type of change ringing performance. In a quarter peal, each bell rings 1,250 times, and it takes about 45 minutes. For special occasions, highly advanced ringers will ring a full peal, in which each bell sounds 5,000 times, and it takes about three hours. But most ringers don't ring peals, just like most people who like to run don't run in marathons. I got a chance to climb up into the tower and see these bells. We ring them mouth up, so when we pull the rope, the bell swings 360 degrees, the rope wraps around the wheel, and when it is mouth up on the other side of the swing, that's when it sounds. Then we pull the rope again, it swings back the other way, and sounds again at the top. Hingham. Hingham was one of the most interesting towers we rang in. It's an old brick tower. Old brick towers tend to move around when you're ringing, just like a tall skyscraper in the wind. You can actually feel them swaying. It's perfectly safe, but it can be a little disconcerting. It also adversely affects the balance of the bells, making them hard to control, sort of like trying to keep your balance on a moving train without holding a rail. In addition, the fittings on these bells need a little TLC, so they were very difficult to strike properly, and they were a lot of hard work. Ringing bells like this can really tire you out. All this made for a fun, challenging, and at times humorous experience. Okay. All right, if I put some calls in? Yeah. Yeah, fine. Here we go then. Like pull. I pull harder. Look to. Trouble's going. She's gone. <laughs> You can hear that these rounds are all discombobulated. It'll settle down to some extent once we figure these wonky bells out. Despite that these were the hardest bells to ring on the tour, this was one of the most fun stops. Most bell towers, including this one, have an empty space between the ringing room and the bells to help with the sound control. The ropes are inside those wooden guides, which are an unusual feature of this tower. Where it's got wet, the water rain's getting in, and the, and the slider is rotten at the end. Yeah. So it's not only broken, but it's rotten as well. Yeah. Um, an interesting wheel. Oh, that's not, that's not a small wheel. I suppose it is from 19, isn't it? 19. Smith College's bells were cast in 1967. Newer bells are often tuned better than older bells. Note the difference between the sound of these bells and the older bells you heard earlier. Pudsey is a method name, like Stedman that you heard before. Stedman was named after a person, but Pudsey, like many methods, is named after a place. Sometimes we'll ring more than one method and switch between them as we go, so this call tells the ringers to switch from whatever they were ringing before to Pudsey. Pudsey is actually a shortened version of the name. The full name of the method is Pudsey Surprise Major. The Kent School is a very exclusive private boarding school in the hills of Connecticut. The setting is amazing. It reminds me of Hogwarts. I only got a few seconds of video footage here, but I did catch some of us raising the bells. Remember how the bells in Hingham were mouth down, but the bells in Orleans were mouth up? When we ring them, they are mouth up, but it isn't safe to leave them this way, so they are normally stored mouth down when not in use. That means before we can start ringing, we have to raise them to the mouth up position. To raise the bells, we start them swinging and add more and more energy as we go to get them higher and higher. It looks like this, at least the first tiny bit of it. Next stop, New York City. <laughs> Trinity Wall Street is a really special ring. 
One thing you'll notice in a bit is that the tower climb is very long. When this church was built, it was the tallest building in the United States. Now it's not even in the top 10 in its neighborhood, but there's no elevator and it was quite a steep climb to the top with lots of stairs and ladders to maneuver through. Although the building is very old, the bells are very new, having been cast in 2006. They are well made, well maintained, and they sound amazing. There are 12 bells hung for change ringing here. In Britain, there are well over 112 bell towers. But here in North America, there are only two, this one and one in Toronto. So if you want to learn to ring 12 bell methods in the US, this is the only place you can do it. I had never rung in a 12 bell tower before, so this one was especially great for me. While we're climbing, let's chat about the methods we ring in a bit more detail. Our music follows three rules. The first one you already know. We always start with rounds, the descending scale, and end in rounds. The second rule is you can only move, at most, one place at a time. That means if I am currently ringing in fifth place, the next time I ring my bell, I can swap over with the bell in fourth place, I can swap over with the bell in sixth place, or I can ring in fifth place again. I can't ring in third or seventh place. I can only move, at most, one place. The third rule is the most interesting. Between the rounds at the beginning and end, no permutations can be repeated. So on six bells, if the bells sound in the order 1, 3, 5, 2, 4, 6, we can't in that particular performance ring the bells in that order again. Usually we don't have to think about these rules at all while we're ringing. We just follow the lines of the methods and the calls made by the conductor, and if it was composed properly, it all magically comes back to rounds. I'm standing behind the treble, the smallest and highest pitch bell. The lowest or tenor bell, which weighs well over a ton here, is being rung by the lady to my right in the bottom right hand corner of the frame. Ringing a very heavy bell takes a lot of practice and great technique, but if you know what you're doing, it doesn't require superhuman strength. With that said, I wouldn't recommend picking a fight with Jackie. The bells here at St. Mark's in Center City, Philadelphia were cast by the Whitechapel Bell Foundry in 1876 and 1878, which is the same foundry that cast Philadelphia's most famous bell, the Liberty Bell. The tenor bell in this tower is approximately the same size as the Liberty Bell. Historically, Philadelphia is an important place for change ringing in North America. It's home to the second ring of bells on the continent installed at a different church, Christ Church, in 1754. The first ever full peal of 5,000 changes ever rung outside the British Isles was rung there in 1850. The bells are still there, but they are no longer functional for change ringing. Besides Christchurch and St. Mark's, there's one other historic ring of bells in the city at St. Peter's Church. Like Christchurch, St. Peter's bells are no longer ringable. Therefore, St. Mark's are the only historic bells in the city that can be rung by change ringers. There's one other tower in Philadelphia, a much more modern ring at St. Martin in the Fields in the upscale Chestnut Hill neighborhood. These bells are quite light and very friendly for beginners. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get a video of the ringing here. Who is in this? Who? Who? Everybody except myself, Kent.
Newcastle, Delaware was one of my favorite stops. This tower has only six bells and they are quite light, with the tenor weighing in at only 416 pounds. There's a lot of variation among bell towers. They can have anywhere from three to sixteen bells, but normally they have six, eight, ten, or twelve. They also vary widely in size, from a tenor weight of less than a hundred pounds all the way up to a whopping nine thousand pounds for the largest change ringing bell in the world, which is located at Liverpool Cathedral. The lighter a ring and fewer number of bells in it, the faster it tends to ring. So a nice light six like these can really be a lot of fun to ring, especially if they sound as great as these bells do. Because these ropes are arranged in a U-shape and there are only six of them, it's a little easier to see what's going on. The high-pitched treble is on the far left and the low-pitched tenor is on the right. The bells strike about a second after the ringer pulls the rope, so you have to really think ahead. See if you can pick out a ringer and figure out which note that you hear is that ringer's bell. The tenor is a good one to start with. Just before the bells get back to rounds, the conductor will say that's all as a warning that we're done. We made a quick stop to ring at a church in Frederick, Maryland. Sorry, no ringing footage. Then we headed down to the Washington, D.C. area. The first stop there was at the newest ring of bells in North America, located at Virginia Theological Seminary in Alexandria. Not all methods that we ring are created equal. One of the things we try to do is ring methods that are particularly pretty to listen to. One of the most pleasant sounds we make is called a roll-up. A roll-up occurs when several bells sound in a musical scale order. If a method or composition has a lot of roll-ups, it might be described as very musical. Although we call it a roll-up, the scale can be either ascending or descending. You're about to hear two descending roll-ups, one change apart on the largest four bells, numbers five, six, seven, and eight, right after the conductor calls a bob. The old post office in downtown Washington, D.C. is home to the official bells of the U.S. Congress. They were a gift to the people of the United States from an English foundation in honor of the 1976 bicentennial. They were intended to be a replica of the bells that hang in Westminster Abbey. I've spent a lot of time ringing these bells and even crawling up among them inspecting ropes and tightening nuts and bolts. The building is owned by the government, but it's leased to a certain infamous hotel operator for now. However, the bells are not part of the lease, and the tower is even open to tourists. So if you're in town, come check it out. Washington National Cathedral is home to the heaviest ring of bells in North America, with a tenor weight of 3,588 pounds. Anytime you have a chance to ring at a grand cathedral like this, it's a special experience. And I had the pleasure of taking my first ever pulls on a bell rope right here in 2001.
There are several unique features of this tower. First of all, there are two completely different types of bells in it. On the lower level of the tower, there is a 53 bell carillon, shown here. In a carillon, the bells are hung stationary. A single carillonore plays the instrument using a keyboard-like console in this room. Each key, called a baton, is mechanically connected to a hammer that strikes the corresponding bell when the baton is pressed. The ringing chamber for the change ringing bells is upstairs, above the carillon. The views from a place like this are stunning. This is a fringe benefit of being a bell ringer. Another unique feature of this tower is the bell frame itself. In most towers, the bells are arranged in a square or rectangular grid. We've seen a couple of examples of this, but in this tower, the bells are arranged in a circle. This helps minimize the stress exerted on the tower by the swinging of the bells. It also enables the ropes to be arranged in a circle without the use of pulleys or guides, which makes the bells much easier to ring. So even though these bells are very heavy, they're not difficult. The treble in this tower is being rung by the lady in the pink shirt on the far right. The 3,600 pound tenor is being rung by the man in the blue shirt who's standing on a box. Boxes like these are useful on large bells to prevent a long rope from piling up around your feet, which can be dangerous. They can also help shorter ringers ring bells whose ropes have been adjusted for a taller person. I've rung these bells many times, but rarely got a chance to sit and just listen. So while the rest of the group was ringing a quarter peal, I went outside just to enjoy. They're ringing Stedman Caters, which means the method Stedman on nine bells. The tenth bell, the tenor, is ringing in tenth place on every change. See if you can hear it. My last stop on the tour was here, in Raleigh, North Carolina, home to a fun little eight-bell ring at a historic church downtown. This was the 15th tower on the tour, and the rest of the group went on to visit seven more in Charleston, South Carolina, Augusta, Georgia, and the Atlanta area. But I had to go home to Florida to get back to work. Sorry about this last shot, especially to my friend and tour roommate Mike, whose head is prominently featured, but it's the only video I have with me in it on the far left. If you live in Florida, anywhere near Orlando or Tampa, which is my neck of the woods, or near Miami, where there is a tower, and you're interested in learning more about change ringing, I will teach you. My website is changeringing.info. Get in touch. If you live in the U.S. or Canada, you can get in touch with the North American Guild of Change Ringers. In the U.K. and other English-speaking countries, the Central Council of Church Bell Ringers can put you in touch with your nearest bell tower. And to all my friends from the tour, all of whom are much better ringers than me, I had a wonderful trip. Thank you to all of you. Hope to see you again soon.